All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Dororo, Episode 2. All right. Hey, so we've been introduced to Dororo. And the child. Yes, and the child is one who has lost a lot. Yeah. Has, like, Mm -hmm. like... But like, starting to regain some of what they lost. Yes. Yes. At the very least, a face, it seems like. Skin, kind right. of. Right. Yeah. It's something mm-hmm. that's a little bit little bit of a mystery at this point here. But yeah. the main thing is that the dad made a deal with higher powers, demons, yep. if you will. Mm-hmm. And um, it gave him power. It gave him right. status. It, it, it helped secure his position yep. in this world. And yet we have kind of this uh, potential ragtag kind of duo group Mm -hmm. of Dororo and the child who are going to maybe be just kind of going about hunting, you know, like evil creatures, evil creatures, or maybe seeking to do good or maybe just helping Dororo grow up, like, or or maybe reclaim what they've lost if mm-hmm. you killing these evil creatures is what's doing that. Yeah, it, it's it's a little bit vague right now, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of room to explore, especially right. given the badass nature of what this child right. now is in terms of a fighter. Yeah, that, it's kind of ridiculous that does all this with no limbs. Mm-hmm. Or at the very least, no arms. I'm not sure about. I don't think they have legs. I think either. yeah, it was supposed to be no limbs. At yeah. All, so. so yeah, crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a dark show as well. There's a yes, lot of just a bit, a lot of horrific elements there. Yeah. So yeah, y'all. Episode two. Without further ado, let's get into it. Is this the battle bard that we saw? Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. That's a good point. It did seem like uh, the child had skin at the very least, you know, in the OP, so. Well, if anything, the child's all better in the OP. That's That's another true. thing, yeah. Unless this is like Dororo grown up. Sure. But I don't think so. I think more of what it is is that it's, like you said, it's the story of the child regaining what they lost Mm -hmm. and what is life going to mean on the journey towards regaining that. Right. Like, because if there is any any kind of, like, concrete hope that the child has of being whole again, imagine what that must be like. Like, just dreaming, basically, of having skin and arms and legs again and... Or for the first right. time. Something they never have, exactly. Yeah. Or they've never experienced having. Mm-hmm. This is the Dororo fascination. No, can't hear you. Oh, it does have ears. Why is that part of the mask, actually? Because back when... Or just using his arm to scoop up water. Oh, fishing. Oh. Dang. All right. Could sense the fish. Jeez. All right. I'm just eating them raw. Huh? Let me show you fire. Oh, nice. Awesome. Well, there you go. Cool. And that's how you do fire, kids. Yeah, that's a good point. If you could see, you would have to trust a little bit when people do like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're like, oh, someone's trying to make a make a point to me. Those prosthetic hands have even be yeah, I know. The fingers, yeah, how do the fingers like, work? Yeah, right. Yeah, but I mean, we have monsters, so any kind of fantastical aspect of this. Right. Mm. Huh? Millionaire. Wow. Wow. Oh, okay. So we can't hear. Wow. Okay. They gave off a different color. Alright. Oh, but it's not it's not green like the earth. It's neutral, it's grey. Hmm. Ah. ah, the first was his master? Probably, yeah. Oh, this is the guy in the OP. 
Yep. That's an interesting profession, the idea of beautifying corpses so that they can be buried with like some honor or what yeah. have you. Or maybe even be given like a a more holistic burial or something. I don't know. Maybe there's a belief that they take that Oh, backstory. Oh. Oh, nice. Those are fake arms, so... Huh. Mr. No Name. <laughs> Alright. I love lying by fires like that, because then your feet have this, like, warm feeling, mm -hmm. but it's not oppressively, like, hot or anything, because yeah. the heat's going straight up. <laughs> Excessive motion. <laughs> That's... It's a good thing Dororo is talkative, otherwise the audience won't have a yeah, you know, an idea of what uh, or why they're doing anything. Yes, laying it on thick. <laughs> oh, what was his name of the episode again? Something about Bandai? <laughs> He's like, they're paying us! <laughs> they're paying us up front! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, the in travelers and well, then... the 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 other monster. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that Hyakimaru didn't freak out when right. seeing this in the forest, so it's not a monster, or it's not hostile. Yeah. Well, Hyakimaru doesn't want whatever whatever this thing is offering. Mm. Whoa, that's creepy. The, the yeah. door closed. Ah, uh, they might freak out when they find if they find out what Hyakimaru is. Mm, see, they're not as enthusiastic about food. Right. Food. Things have changed. Yep, yep. And we're gonna close the gate behind you. A candle was lit without her being there. Maybe Bandai's the, the monster. Yeah, yeah. And they're bringing them here to feed to her. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The eyes. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Don't judge by appearances. Some kind of succubus or whatever that has them all charmed. That's true, they're all men. Yeah, I haven't seen... I haven't seen a child, I haven't seen a woman. Yeah. Maybe you're right. <laughs> oh, nice. The warrior bard here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love how everyone's kind of lost something. Mm -hmm. Oh. Whoa, they moved at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Are we gonna see the true form? Whoa! Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, her legs have a problem. She's a snake. Yep. Oh. Right. Malice, well, and it hatred. goes further beyond the covers. Yeah. Uh. Oh, what? Oh, alright. Oh! Wow! Even in that form, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, dang. All right, all right. Oh, good. This thing's gonna come help. Oh! Oh! Okay. That little distraction. Yeah. That sounds oh. like Ava's voice actor. Voice actress. Oh. Whoa. Oh, wow. What? Oh. They're, now they're getting haunted. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. <笑>あ、ナイス、ナイス。ていうか。似てたんだ。ああ。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。ナイス。
that Hyakimaru has, which right. there we go. This is his name, Hyakimaru. Yep. So, so they can have two two basically angles of exposition. One from uh, Dororo talking about just all the things as he's talking to Hyakimaru, mm -hmm. just you know talking to him because why not, right? The right. sounds would get irritating. And then you've got the warrior bard who gives the exposition on the on on not just the 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 way the world works, but then also maybe some insight into Hyakimaru for Dororo so that it can help facilitate communication. Yeah. And while he doesn't have to be in the story on the grand scale of things, uh -huh. it's good to have him here in the beginning at the very right. least. Just to get them going. He yeah. gets things rolling. Yep. So, uh, Dororo, again, I think, I think Dororo is a girl still. But I think in some ways, it's like... It doesn't really matter at, at this point because Dororo is just Dororo. Dororo okay. is a is a character and stuff like that. But I think Dororo is a boy, just like okay. sort of like the you know the the like I don't know the yeah yeah but yeah I just maybe it's to, the best you know yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think but, if anything it's just that Dororo is a kid mm -hmm. and this kid has lost their parents right and they're clinging to Yakimaru. Because in some ways Hyakimaru is this uh, it's sense, a sense of security. Of security. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, SOS. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a uh, semblance of sanity. Right. For uh, Dororo. Yeah. But Hyakimaru, there's something very interesting going on here. Mm -hmm. The idea that Hyakimaru allows Dororo to be around him because he senses no hostility, hostility yeah. or uh -huh. negative intention right but the idea is that if that perception is true mm -hmm. what that means is that dororo has at least a good soul right. but what i like about that is that they framed it as a negative there's no negative not at a there is a positive sure. mm -hmm. which means in my opinion it's more that dororo is a neutral soul a soul with no, there's nothing negative. No, just a just a regular person, and that aspect of regularity, that aspect of a normal person, with nothing great or special about mm -hmm. them, or nothing evil or negative about them, means that that's something foreign to this world, according to you know, kind of the way the world's been built up thus far. There's a lot of cruelty here. Yes. There's a lot of dark, oh, yeah. crazy things uh -huh. happening. And almost yep. every person we've met has either been, you know, a good, good person or a pretty, awful pretty person. awful, yeah. awful person. There hasn't been a whole lot of middle ground. Exactly. And Dororo, I think, is that middle ground. That's the point. Okay. Is that Dororo is going to be the one that kind of weaves and moves within the middle mm -hmm. ground so there can be future conflict when Dororo starts to feel maybe a little bit unsafe, a little bit worried, or in this case, which I think was what happened here, was there was a slight discoloration Dororo regarding the feelings when Dororo mentioned the, Their the mom. mother. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was like, oh, right. Oh, that's when Hyakimaru had some empathy and was right. like, here's my name. Uh -huh. You can feel okay. Right. And I I like that kind of subtle emotional mm -hmm. storytelling. Yep. yep. Because it's it's something that is kind of forced to be showing rather than telling. Yes, there's there's it a has decent to be. Yeah. there's a decent amount of telling that goes in there because they kind of have to make sure that the audience catches it because right. it's what the show it's it's the the crux of almost the entire show right. at this point. Yeah. Um but they still do it first through showing, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Because I I feel like it's they're getting us acclimated to it and making sure that everyone's sort of on the same page so that later they can have stuff like this happen yeah. and you know to look for it you know right. that like that okay this is the the relationship dynamic that they're going for mm -hmm. i need to look out for these kinds of things you mm -hmm. know the the all those all the little stuff that hyakimaru does you know that dororo might not necessarily clue into immediately right. but given that dororo now knows a bit more about hyakimaru and how he works and and you know all of that they're you know probably going to be keeping an eye out a lot more sure. for those sorts of things you know sure. so that they won't necessarily need the warrior bard to be there to explain <laughs> it you know yes exactly um, but yeah this is a this is a good episode mm -hmm. you know it was fairly straightforward the episodic you know monster of the week kind of a thing but yep. they used it in a cool way to get Dororo and Hyakimaru to be vulnerable with each other a bit more and be a little stuff closer like yeah exactly and this is definitely going to be just with regards to 
this this idea of them just going out looking for mm -hmm. uh you know monsters or what have you seems like a very slow burn kind of story yeah. mm -hmm. like and given a, that it's too core that kind of makes sense that does make sense yeah mm -hmm. but they're drawing a connection now very literally to the whole aspect of the demons versus ghouls and the demons yes. potentially having something that ties back to the shrine you know the shrine uh -huh. that that the dad right. made the deal at so that when these demons either die or are defeated uh -huh. or defeated specifically by Hyakimaru, ha Hyakimaru uh -huh. they relinquish that part right. that was that, taken from him at childbirth exactly, yeah. back to Hyakimaru. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we started with skin earlier mm -hmm. and now we're going to like pain, pain and, feeling. And feeling. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. whoa. Yep. Whoa. That's actually a good point. I wonder if, if we looked at pain mm -hmm. and the idea of motion and the idea of restricted motion and what that sensory feedback is, yeah. if there's something beyond that in the sense of, you know, touch that someone could have if they still didn't have the ability to feel pain. I don't know, but that is, but it is curious because if this mm -hmm. is a two core show, well, and you know, how would they keep this up if they had Hyakimaru defeating a demon every episode and getting another aspect exactly. of what he lost back? You know, yeah, like you can't keep that up forever. Or if you did, then you would have to have it be something that gets a lot more specific. It's not just like, mm -hmm. you know, I got my eyes back, or I got, you know, it's like I got my left eye back, yeah. right? I got my, le my left eye back. We're playing a reverse know. game of Hangman, here, right? Everyone. Exactly. I got my legs back, but I don't have. I can't actually make them do anything, you know, or something like oh, that. That was that's a good point. Um, just getting back an eye, you'd probably almost go blind instantly. You wouldn't be able to use it for like forever. You know when oh, babies it, like get their eyes for the oh, first uh -huh. time and they come out of the womb and stuff? Right. And then they just kind of, oh. Now, hopefully for uh, Hyakimaru's case, it will have, you know, because it's uh, demon deals and whatnot, hopefully the demons exercise the limbs, you know, regularly and everything like that so that when they come back, you know, he can still be a functional person and doesn't have to go through a bunch of rehab every time it happens but although that might be a cool story uh -huh. aspect and, of this yep. as well and another way for for him and dororo to bond mm -hmm. that's one of the other things like the voice you know things yeah. like that hearing you know th that those kinds of things um yeah there's a lot of potential areas for trusting each other yes that comes in here because they both have things that the other person can't do and right. i love these stories when they come into things like this because usually from from what i mm -hmm. kind of remember growing up was these stories were well one they weren't as dark but two That's when they true. had these types of dynamics it was usually like the dog and the boy sure and the dog you know has you know no ability to talk or do any of these other uh -huh. kinds of things but can smell out things can sense danger exactly. yeah. and kind of looks out for the boy but the boy has the uh, the intelligence and the creative problem solving right. ability and the communication and all that to be able mm -hmm. to do these things, but you know can't fight off the right. wildcat when it comes exactly. to you know yeah. attack or, mm -hmm. or something. Yep. And if Dororo ends up being kind of a a focal main character mm -hmm. for getting more and more vulnerable, given that they're the one that kind of has all the benefits you know it has all the has all the blessings and stuff has all the has no has no real sure. negative thing that they're restricted by it's more mm -hmm. just that uh um, the circumstances of their life and the fact that you know yeah, they're, they're an orphan or yeah or at the very least they don't know where their parents are probably right. one of their parents is dead um yeah and and they're they're not physically strong enough to be able to survive in this world if anyone really wanted them dead yeah 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 we saw that in the first episode there that Doro just kind of got lucky with the, yeah. the, uh, uh -huh. the bruiser guys right. there. Um, um, moving but, forward, yeah. I mean, they'll probably maintain this formula for at least the next several episodes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're setting this up, but the way the OP sets it up is that that Hyakimaru is going to be restored probably mm -hmm. within this two core section there. Yeah. So you could have it be a self-contained narrative mm -hmm. and end the oh, story... Yeah 
where Hyakimaru got restored like six mm-hmm. episodes before the ending or right. something like that. And, and you could have all kinds of conversations cool. happening between Hyakimaru and Dororo both after he's fully restored and also when it's like, like he's the, like 80% the of the way restored and he can yeah. actually talk and listen and things like that. And that transition between like maybe, you know, okay, you can't listen or speak. Right. Now you can listen, but you can't speak. Mm-hmm. Or now you can speak, but you can't, you know, hear or something like that. Right. right. You know, um, yeah, th- there's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff that they can get there. Yeah, and and I've always had this appreciation for the characters that have the physical kind of limitation, thing that, physical kind of, limitation in uh-huh. some ways, but they turn it into a positive. Right. And while this is something that Hyakimaru kind of got blessed with this like demon vision or just mm-hmm. like, you know, soul vision, it's something where I actually wonder about the end game for the story with regards to the um, to the dad, oh. because in some ways it's like the demons created their own harbinger of revenge. If Yakimaru finds out basically what ended up happening over the course mm-hmm. of going after these demons, because I think the demons were trying to egg him on a little bit, at least in that part where there was the creature, right? Mm-hmm. And the tail morphed into the woman, right? Right. But there was a part where the woman seemed to get like extra possessed and like horns came out and it became more of a stereotypical devil right. look, uh-huh. right? Yep, yep. But then he quickly, like Doro, quick, not Doro, Yakimaru quickly stabbed mm-hmm. like in the head. A couple times. Yeah, just killed it. But the idea was that the the form that it took left the the, the lady form. Uh, right. So I'm wondering if maybe there's something that... Mm-hmm is kind of the the flesh form that the demons are inhabiting and then they lose right. some aspect of uh-huh. their power or if they're actually being killed killed you know who knows who knows who yeah knows? it's it's where that whole fantasy mythological aspect comes in right. and i'm not that well versed in the yeah. um the myth of uh you know japanese folklore and stuff mm-hmm. with regards to this this time period and stuff yep but um but yeah, very, very good mystical. Episode. Yeah, good, yes. good and end cap to the way they solved the whole thing with the village. And we got the warrior bard back. I was, we a did. Bit, I was a little yes. bit worried in the previous episode that yes. it was going to be a while before we saw him again. Right. The fact that we saw him so quickly, I like that. I like on that on some level, though, it makes me a little worried that in an episode or two he'll be gone and won't yes. return for like seven episodes. Well, yeah, so. I mean they can do that because you know he's he can be sort of the traveling sage kind of a deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. We'll meet again, samurai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. So that's Dor- that's Dororo episode two. <laughs> yes. If you want to see the next episode's reaction right now, go check out the link in the description below for our mm-hmm. Patreon. You can get an early access there, and any level support gets you access to our Discord, where you can chat with us about these stories, about anime in general, or just whatever. If we get everything squared away with uh, copyright stuff, full length will also be available there as right. well. And then Jacob's going to talk to you about another story that he's Indeed. very interested in. Indeed, yes. So another thing you can get access to on the Discord is... All the places where we're talking about battle lines, being exactly. a sci-fi novel. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Um, it has some great characters and interactions and things like that, along with some wonderful action mm-hmm. that does also involve swords. So, yes, yes. you know, if you want to get access to that, it's on Amazon. Link in the description. Go buy it. Leave a review. It's wonderful. I'm sure you'll love it. Yeah. So if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.